So, we're very happy to be here in Sholei today. Actually, it may appear that we are in Sholei today. But actually, we are not in Sholei today. Because wherever the chanting of the holy names of God is going on, that place is not in this material world. So if you think you're in Sholei today, so if you think you're in Sholei today, you're dreaming. Wake up. Realize that there is a Supreme Person who is the source of all existence. And you are part of Him. This whole universe is simply His manifested energy. And you are part of that manifested energy. And as the part of that manifested of that Supreme Manifestor of all the be, as a part of that Supreme Manifestor of all the be, you are meant to serve that Supreme Person. You see, the part is always meant to serve the whole. Just like, look at your body, for example. You have two hands. What is the purpose of the hands? The purpose of the hands is to serve the body. The part is meant to serve the whole. So there is a complete whole of which you are a part. Therefore, you are meant to serve that complete whole. That's the purpose of your existence. You have no other reason to exist. Other than to serve that complete whole. So, how to serve that complete whole? That is not difficult. That complete whole has revealed himself to us in full. In the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita. He says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matak Sarvam Pravartate Iti Madhva Bhajante Mang Buddha Bhava Samanvata. I am the source of all the material and spiritual worlds. Jis sako, aš esu šaltinis visų materialių ir dvasinių pasaulio. 
Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly well engage themselves in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. So you don't have to be confused. You don't have to be bewildered about why you exist. That supreme person who is the source of everything has clearly revealed to you why you exist. You exist for the purpose of serving that supreme person. That's why you exist. Just as your hand is created to serve the complete body, you, being the part of God, are meant to serve God. So if the hand neglects to serve the body, what is the position of the hand? It is diseased. You have to, if your hand doesn't work properly, you go to the doctor to get it fixed. They even have doctors who specialize on hands. Yes, we know one doctor in the U.S., Dr. Patel. He stuts splashes on hand. He's a hand doctor. So there is another type of hand doctor, and that is the spiritual master. Because we are all like hands, and God is the complete whole. So right now we hands are in a disease state. We're not serving the complete whole. So the spiritual master, he is God's representative. He teaches us how we can serve God. He shows by his practical example. And he engages us in devotional service. He shows us exactly what we need to do to be engaged in devotional service. So we will follow the directions of the bona fide spiritual master. Then we become properly situated in relationship with God. We become like a healthy hand once again. So therefore the spiritual master is the most important person. Because he reconnects us with God. Actually, without the mercy of the spiritual master, we cannot make any spiritual progress. We are completely dependent on the mercy of the spiritual master. Therefore, the devotees always pray for the mercy of the spiritual master. They're always begging for his blessings. Because in this way they become reconnected with God. And when one is reconnected with God, what is the result? You realize your eternal nature. You realize your identity beyond this material existence. In normal everyday life, how do we think of ourselves? Do you think that you're a woman? Or do you think you're a man? We normally do, don't we? I'm a woman. I'm a man. We normally think that way. But you know that's not really true. Is that shocking? You're not a woman. And you're not a man. Why? Because the body is a covering only. Just like today you have on a red shirt. 
I see you have a red Now, tomorrow you may have on a white shirt. Are you Miss Red Shirt or Miss White Shirt? Are you Mrs. Rodoni Marskinelli or Mrs. Baltier Marskinelli? No, you have nothing to do with the show. Not your identity. So, in the same thing, that body you have now, that female body, is not, is not you any more than that red shirt is you. This is called Brahman realization. Because we've had many, many bodies in many, many lifetimes. Who is the actual self? That's what we have to find out. The actual self is a spirit soul, qualitatively one with God. This body gets sick and it gets old and dies. But we don't like that. Why not? If it's natural, who, why would one mind getting old and get sick and dying if it's natural? Does anyone know the answer? Since it's natural to get sick, old and die, why, why does it disturb our minds? Why aren't we happy getting sick and old and dying? Anybody know? Because we consider uh, that we are body. Now why, why are we not, why do we, why does it disturb our minds to get sick, old and die? That's my question. If you, if I am this body, then what does it matter if I get it's a natural, if it's natural to get sick of the eye, then why does it bother me if I get sick of the eye? Anybody know the answer? Because it's not my nature. Maharaji knows the answer. Guru Mata, what is it? It's not our nature. It's not our nature. Because actually you're not that body, you're not a temporary being. Because you're actually an eternal healthy, useful being that never dies, you see. That's who you really are. You, the spiritual being, never get sick. You never get old. And you never die. That is not your nature to get sick at all and die. That's why these things disturb us. Getting old, getting sick and dying disturb us because that's not our nature actually. What is the nature of a fish? The nature of the fish is to swim in the water. You take the fish out of the water, it's very disturbing for the fish. Because he's not in his natural atmosphere. So we are actually spiritual beings. Our natural atmosphere is the spiritual world. That's why this material atmosphere is very disturbing to us. We're not happy in this world. We find so many miseries in this world. And we try to solve these miseries by making adjustments within this world. When our hair turns gray, what do we do? We might get some dye, you know, to hide the gray hair. But that doesn't stop the aging process. We get sick, we go to a doctor. And he may give us some medicine. Does that mean we won't get sick again? No, we got sick, we'll get sick again. Even when you get well, still you will get sick again. There's no doctor who can get rid of all your sickness forever. And what about death? Can you pay the doctor to give you, doctor, just give me one more year, I'll give you a special... I'll pay you a little extra if you can just keep me going for another year. 
Can the doctor do that? No. So these problems cannot be solved by any material arrangements. But if you will awaken your original spiritual nature, by regularly chanting the names of God, this is called mantra meditation. If you will spend some time meditating every morning, connecting yourself with God, then your consciousness will become liberated from this bodily prison. Even though you'll still be walking around Shaolai, you won't be living in Shaolai anymore. But you, because you, every morning in your meditation you go to the spiritual world. Gradually as you become strong and powerful in your meditation, You'll be able to maintain 24 hours a day that meditation. Whether you're at work, whether you're at school, or wherever you may be. If you meditate very nicely in the morning in the holy names of God, then you'll learn how to live in the spiritual world 24 hours a day. It takes time. It takes practice. You have to be trained by a bona fide spiritual master. Or by a senior advanced devotee. How to properly meditate. But if you will take this training, how to do every day your mantra meditation, then you become the happiest person. You won't believe how happy you can be. You'll be happy than the richest, most powerful, most famous person in the whole world. Bill Gates will be like a pauper compared to you. You'll be like, you'll be like a poor man compared to you. Paul McCartney will be some unknown person compared to you. Is he? When you become Krishna conscious, you become the most successful person. Why? Because you'll be in direct contact with God Himself 24 hours a day. If you're in direct contact with God who is the source of all existence at every minute, you cannot be lacking in anything. So you must learn this art of mantra meditation. You can take any name of God according to religion. If you're a Christian, you can chant the name of Christ. If you're a Jew, you can chant Jehovah. If you're a Muslim, you can chant Allah. If you're a Hindu, you can chant Krishna. Or if you have nothing else to chant, we will give you some nice mantra to chant. This mantra is mentioned in the Vedas. In the Kali Santarana Upanishad. As being the most powerful mantra. For liberating yourself from all the miseries of this age. That is the mantra we were chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I can ask now if there's any question. Krishna, 
garbinti, išluovinti, kad įgyti meilę visiems jo kūriniams, tarkim, žmonėms, gyvūnams, visą tai žvaigždėms, žemėm ir panašiai. If we want to get love for everyone, it is enough only to love Krishna, to get this love for everybody. Mm. Can we get love for everyone just by loving Krishna? Your question is very nice. I speak Russian or Lithuanian. Lithuanian. So, when you water and root of the tree, are all the leaves and branches nourished? Visos šakos ir lapų yra palaistumi? Yes or no? When you feed your belly, does your whole body get the nutrition? Kai maitinantė savo pilvą, ar visas kūnas gauna maisto medžiagą? So in the same way, lygiai tokiu pat būdu, if you just give your love to Krishna, jeigu duosiai savo meilį Krišnai, because Krišna is the root of the entire existence, kad jau Krišna yra visos egzistencijos šaknis, when you give your love to Krishna, then your love goes to all living beings throughout the whole universe. That's why when you chant Hare Krishna, it feels so good. Because you're giving pure love to, to God and pure love to everyone when every time you chant Hare Krishna. Any other questions? Prašom, dar klausimu. Kaip bakti dainuoju mantrą, dažnai sako, ramo, ramo, ar čia yra iškraipimas, ar nieko baisa už čia? Sometimes devotees instead of chanting rama, they chant ramo. Yeah, there is Bengali accent. Tai yra bengališkas akcentas. So, we don't have to do it. It's okay in Kirtan if they want to do it. No harm. Bengali style. <laughs> I remember <laughs> I was visiting one. Uh, I was one time uh, in uh, India in Bengal. I went to one one tiny little village uh, on the bank of the uh, Jalangi River. This is very, very remote village. They were living very primitive. Life. And the children, as soon as they saw us, the, the devotees, they became very happy. They came running. And they had their own way of chanting Hare Krishna. They pronounced it slightly differently, but it was so sweet the way they said it. They went, Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Like that. Bengali ways. Hare Krishna! <laughs> So sometimes the in the Bengali accent, they say, there's no harm if sometimes they go Hari Rama, but we don't have to do. I mean, if they do sometimes, it's no big, no, nothing wrong. But not that we should make that the standard. Prabhupada is our standard. We can say Rama or Ram, that is Prabhupada's team. But it's not that somebody says every now and then Hari Rama, and someone will say, oh, you're in Maya, you're Hari Rama. It's this little Bengali accent. Yeah. Any other question? You said the mantra, kartojam ankstiri te, o jeigu, pavyzdžiui, nespėjai iki šeštos valandos, ar tai jau man nepalanku, ar Krišna tai žino, kad aš nespėjau po karto, ką tada daryti? Vakarė, aš sakau, iš visą nepalanku yra pabaigti mantros kartoj. What to do if I am chanting mantra and I have no time and I am chanting little bit after six? It is bad or it is... You can chant any time, 24 hours a day, Madhuri. But before sunrise is the bad. So we recommend, if possible, rise by 4 o'clock in the morning every day. 
or if you can't get up at four, get up at four thirty. I mean, you know, get up at four thirty. The earlier you get up, the Now sun is rising before six. All right, so get up by four then. I personally like to get up by two thirty or three every day. If I go to bed on time, I get up at two thirty. If I go to bed late, I get up at three. Jeigu atsigulio laiku, tuomet keliuosi 2.30, jeigu viski vėliau, tuomet keliuosi 3. Because then I can chant very nicely with no disturbance. Nes tuomet kartuoju be jokių trinkčių. Any other questions? Ar kokių turti klausimų? Ar šviesto samonės egzistavimas kituose lygmenyse yra amžinas? Ar tie pasauliai, tarkim, su aukštesnė samonė yra sunaikinami kaip ir materialusis ir lieka tik tai dvasinis ir taip toliau? Yra kažkokie tai aukštesnė samonės pasauliai, kur būtybės gyvoja. Ar jie amžiniai yra? Taip, taip, ar jie amžiniai yra tie pasauliai? This place, their demigods is staying. This is temporary place. Where? Demigod planets? Demigod planets. The planets of the demigods are temporary? Is that a question? Yes. The planets of the demigods are within this material world. Their planets are known as Svarga Loka, the heavenly planets. But at the time of the universe devastation, all the planets are destroyed, including the heavenly planet. Bet tada, kad visą atvirą sunaikiną, matomet sunyksta visos planetos atskaitant trojinės. So going to the heavenly planets will not give you permanent shelter. Tad jeigu jis pateks į rojinės planetas, tai nesatiks jums amžinos apsaugos. Even during the duration of the universe, sometimes the demons, powerful demons, conquer the heavenly planets also. Ir netgi kartu jis labai galingi demonai užkariauja rojinės planetas. Just like we see one time Hitler conquered Paris. Lygiai taip pat, kaip mes matėme, kaip Hitleris užkariavo Paryžių. So sometimes the demons, they conquer the heavenly planet. Tad panašiai ir demonai kartais užkariavo įrojinės planetas. So if you want a safe position, tad jeigu norite iš tiesų saugios padėtis, Sian Hare Krishna. Tad tokite Hare Krishna. And then you will escape this entire material world. Tuomet jūs pakirstėte virš visą šitą materialos pasaulį. You will go to Goloka Vrindavan. Ir keliausti į Goloka Vrindavan. The topmost planet in the spiritual world. Aukščiausia dvasinė pasaulio planeta. Where no demons can ever come. Kur negali žengti joks demonas. And it is never destroyed. Ir nekada nėra sunaikinama. You make that your destination. Padarykite tai savo kelionės tikslus. You get your ticket for Goloka Vrindavan. O mes jums zodam biletą į Goloka Vrindavan. Get your visa. 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 Spiritual master will give you a ticket. Dvasinis moktis jums duoda biletą. And pure bhakti is the visa. O tira bhakti yra jūsų visa. So you qualify yourself. Tad jūs turite savę kvalifikuotį. You take the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. Jūs priimkite dvasinį moktį prie agvapstį. Under his direction learn how to become the pure devotee. Ir jo apmokama išmokite, kaip tapti tira atsidavusi. That's how you qualify yourself to go to Galaka Vrindavana. Ir tokiu būdu turėsit kvalifikaciją patekti į Galaka Vrindavana. Adal Garashvayam. The first step is take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. Pirmas žingsnis yra priimti prie glapsti, prie dvasinį moktį. And the second thing is, then you have to inquire from them how to achieve pure devotional service. Sekantis etapas yra klausti, jo kaip pasiektų tyrasi devų trinistį. Any other questions? Prašom dar klausimų. Reikėtų medituoti 24 valandas per dieną, gal jūs galėtų paaiškinti, kaip tai daryti. Can you explain how we can meditate 24 hours per day? Yes. How to meditate 24 hours a day? Yad kuroši yadas nasi, yad jahosi dadasi, yad yad tapasasi konteya, Tat Kadushva Madarpanam. Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 9, Text Number 27. Krishna tells, My dear Arjuna, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, 
as well as whatever austerities you may perform. Do that, O Son of Kunti. O Kunti Sonau Daryktai. Is an offering unto me. So that is the secret, Prabhu. You have to do everything for Krishna. Stop making yourself the center of the universe. Every thought, every word, and every deed, in all times, all places, and all circumstances, should be done for Krishna's pleasure. Whatever you're doing, you should think, is this pleasing to Krishna? It is, do it. If it's not, don't do it. You have to always analyze, is this favorable for my Krishna consciousness? Or is this unfavorable for my Krishna consciousness? Always do that which is favorable. And then you'll be in the right track. Rupa Goswami is saying By whatever means, always keep your mind fixed on Krishna. All the different rules and prohibitions of the scriptures are the servants of this principle. Whatever you're doing, you must always remember Krishna. And you must never forget him. If you do this, you'll be solidly fixed in Krishna consciousness. And you'll achieve the stage known as Nishta. When the modes of material nature no longer disturb you. Any other questions? Yeah. Why now in the world uh, happening so many bad things, wars and so many earthquakes, all these bad things, there yeah. is some answer to some uh, bad car. Yes, we are getting, because we, why are so many bad things happening in the world now? Earthquakes, revolutions, tsunamis, etc., economic upheaval. The reason these things are happening is we are disobeying the laws of God. If you disobey the laws of God, there will be reaction. So, we, as a human race, we are suffering the reactions because we are, we are denying that even God exists in many cases. We are openly defying uh, the laws of God. Krishna says we should protect the cows. But they are forcing them into the slaughterhouses. We understand that life is sacred. But every day we are killing millions of babies in the abortion clinics. So we can expect with so much sinful activities we are committing. We can expect there will be some reactions. If you do, if you break the law, then the government, the police will come and catch you. So, as a society, we are breaking the laws of God, and nature is like the policeman coming to punish you. But if you will personally obey the laws of God, you will be protected. So 
So we've come to teach you how to obey the laws of God. So you'll be safe. I want to ask, what is the feeling, how are you feeling this relationship with Krishna, when you're serving Krishna, what is the feeling of relationship with Him? How you feel that relationship? How does it, how, how does it feel, the relationship with Krishna? Yes. So <coughs> wonderful. It's the most wonderful, loving relationship you could ever imagine. In fact, it's, it's, beyond, it's inconceivably wonderful. Reciprocate love with Krishna, you can't even begin to understand how wonderful Krishna is. You give your love to Him and He gives you ten times love back. Krishna is so magnanimous, if you fully surrender to Him, He will give Himself completely to you. Just like Krishna became the chastised son of Mother Jasoda. If you love Him like that, He will become your chastised son also. So who can conceive of the loving relationships that one can have with Krishna? Who, it's inconceivable, these loving relationships. <coughs> the only way to really find out is to, to find out what the honey tastes like inside of that jar. Is to unscrew the lid and stick your tongue in. The only way you can really know what it's like to love Krishna is to love Krishna. We can explain it to you, but unless you actually experience it, you won't really un under fully understand it. So that's why we request you to chant every day. Are you chanting Japa Mala every day? No. Well, please start doing that. Do you have Japa Mala? All right, so um, we'd like to ask you to commit to chant, um, uh, to chant regularly every day Japa Mala. How many rounds would you like to chant every day? Mm. Two. Two. You, you sang four. But Guru Mata says you should chant four. Ah, Guru Mata So you will chant four? Ar su tik tumete kas dien kartoti keturis? I will try. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Ne, ne, ne. Let's get paklauste. Do you, do you try to eat every day? Or do you eat every day? If I ask you to eat every day, you say, well, I'll try to eat. No, you will eat. So I want you to commit to four rounds every day. And I will try, but no, I will do it. Will you come in? Yes. <laughs> So, 
We have a very tight schedule. I, I know we have been here a very short time. But we have, we have to, I have a, we have to drive all the way back to Kaunas and I have a very, we have to get up very early in the morning to do our Krishna conscious activity. So I wanted to ask permission if we can, if it's okay if we leave now. They're okay. I know we've been. Can we can we leave just now? All right. All right. Now here's some prasadam to give. Now, darimas, kadalinsim prasada, yeftadati tishvijos. Can we come and get some prasadam? Can we come and get some prasadam?